George Dyer has been speaking at the NFL Combine today and he's been asked about Geno Smith again. I'm, I'm just going to sort of run through very quickly what was said and then I'm going to give you an opinion on what I think is going on. So Bob Condota from the Seattle Times asked Schneider whether he considered Geno Smith to be the starting quarterback right now. Now, there was quite a long answer. The first line has captured everybody's imagination, though. Everybody's talking about the first line where he says, yeah, I mean, I would think, yes, he's the starter until he's not. Not exactly a ringing endorsement, which has been... Consistent whenever John Schneider has taught about Geno Smith or Mike McDonald for that matter over the last few weeks. He then goes on into a longer answer which talks about the fact that coaches aren't coming back to, aren't sort of reconvening until next week with the GM and all of the front office staff after the combine. Obviously, the staff haven't travelled to the combine. They're setting up all of the structures behind the scenes this week and that they won't really know what direction they're going to go until everybody sort of had a meeting, sort of got on the same path. What I would say to that is I find it very hard to believe that the Seahawks don't know exactly what they're planning to do at quarterback right now. The, the, John Schneider will have scouted all of the quarterbacks. His team, his main scouts will have scouted all the quarterbacks. Yes, they've got to interview him. Yes, they've got to get the all-important medical checks. That's the most important thing about the combine this week are the medical checks. And, you know, they'll, they'll go to the pro days and stuff like that to finalise what their board's going to look like. But they know pretty much what they're going to do at this point with regards to which quarterbacks they like, what the plan's going to be, whether Geno Smith's coming back, whether Drew Locke's coming. You know, they've, they've got a good sense of it all. The real mystery, I suppose, is whether Locke comes back. But apart from that, they will generally know what they're going to do. So, yeah, they're going to meet with the coaches next week. And it'd be a real surprise if they all sit down next week and go, right then, guys, what are we doing at quarterback? What do we think? Do we keep, do we keep Geno Smith or are we moving on? That, that's just not very realistic. So I think they know full well what they're going to do. And look, he did another other interviews. He did an interview with Pro Football Talk. He was asked flat out by Mike Florio, you did a bit of contract stuff with Gino Smith last week. Is he your starting quarterback? Is there going to be a competition? And John Schneider went, well, we hope there's going to be a competition. And, you know, we, we thought we were, you know, that was just something that was in the contract that we could do. And we did it to create a bit of cap space. And then he started to talk about the cap space. And they went down a completely different angle of John Schneider thinking it was going to be 249 the cap. And he thought 255 million instead. So sidestep that question very nicely. Non-committal once again. He did an interview with, with CBS. Jacina Randerson and Rick Spielman interviewed him for CBS. In, in that interview, Jacina Randerson said to him, oh, there's an emotional story of, you know, Gino was a bit of a journeyman, but he's, he's settled in in Seattle and you rewarded him for that. And how do you feel about that? What's the future? And also, you know, when's the right time to sort of introduce a young quarterback into the mix and maybe move on and go with a younger guy. And John Schneider was like, he went right down, he took that hand off and went with that. Oh, we've not drafted enough quarterbacks. You know, I met with Ron Wolf for dinner and he was, you know, having a bit of a joke about only two quarterbacks in 14 years and we need to do something differently about that. But hey, you know, we like Drew Locke and we like Geno Smith. And again, putting Drew Locke's name ahead of Geno Smith. No ringing endorsement for Geno Smith. Not answering the question that Jacina Anderson asked about Geno Smith on the NFL Network. Again, asked about Geno Smith. He introduces Drew Locke's name into it. Sidesteps the question again. It, total, non-committal, not going there, not talking about Geno Smith. It's been so consistent throughout with the head coach and the GM. Now, I appreciate that some of the local beat writers had a chance to get John Steiner to one side once he come off the podium, ask some more questions. Somebody in that pool of reporters has asked Schneider about Geno Smith and he offered a more, I think, a more committed answer saying like, yeah, yeah, he's the starter next year. And it was, you know, more people made, other people made more of the money thing with the uh, contract adjustment uh, than, than we did. And it was just a safe cap. And the thing is though, is it still wasn't the most, committed answer to Geno Smith and when you compare it to all of the other answers that he's given at the combine which are very non-committal it, it kind of just doesn't mean anything to me like it would have been so easy for John Schneider either here at the combine or when he's been on 710 or when he did his solo press conference or when he did his press conference with Mike McDonald to say we're looking forward to seeing what Geno Smith can do in this offense next season. We hope to bring back Drew Locke as well. And it's a cool class of quarterbacks. Those are the words that he's used, not mine. And we're going to have a look at them too. No one would have battered an eyelid. No story, nothing to talk about. I wouldn't be doing a video like this.
The reason I'm doing a video like this is because they're saying what they're saying. If it had said what I just said there, which is basically just a, you're not even really committing to Geno Smith. You're just saying, we're looking forward to seeing what he's doing next year in this new offense with Ryan Grubb. We've got some exciting plans, whatever. <laughs> no one reacts to it. Everyone just goes, oh, okay, fine. They're going to do something else. They'll, they'll either draft a young guy to, and Gino be the bridge, or they're just going to go with Gino or whatever. That's what people would have assumed. They have left the door open so much, and there's no reason to do it when you have your quarterback not only contracted, but it's $27 million to trade him now in dead cap money. Like, that's a huge amount of money. So there's no reason to be sort of not provide clarity on Geno Smith there. In any other situation, he would be on the roster and you would just be saying he is, he's the quarterback, he's the starter or whatever, or at the very least he's with us next season and he's the, you know, he's gonna we're gonna hope to bring Drew back to compete with Geno's the guy. You know, there is not another GM who would go up on that podium in that you know, think of any quarterback. I'm not talking about the, the Falcons or something like that, you know, who've got an obvious quarterback need. I'm not even talking about the Giants and Daniel Jones because that's been a mess. Like Geno Smith has performed far better than Daniel Jones has done. Daniel Jones had a big injury that Geno Smith's not had. What I'm talking about is, you know, the quarterbacks who are entrenched as the starter, not necessarily Mahomes or Josh Allen or anything like that, but just quarterbacks that are entrenched as the starter. There's no, none of the other GMs are going up there and, and dodging questions about whether they're QB1. Like, Doug Peterson was asked, have you got your QB1 on the roster right now? Somewhat tongue-in-cheek about Trevor Lawrence. That was more a review of his performance than I think an honest question. And, it, and he, he went, yeah, you know, Trevor's the guy, but he needs to do this, this and this to improve, to get to, to, to realise his potential. It, it, it's, it's uniquely non-committal about a player who is... So financially, it seems tied to Seattle. Why they are not just saying, yeah, he's the guy, yeah, it is wildly open to interpretation. It's not, a non, it's not a nothing thing. You know, in journalism, you have to be curious about everything. You have to ask, quite, why is this being said? What am I reading from what is being said? Why are they answering these questions in this way? Do a bit of digging. Do it a bit of probing. Keep asking questions. That's what journalism is all about. And when you are reading or listening to John Schneider giving these answers, you can't help but be curious as to why. And that's all we're doing here. So anyway, I've told, that's what John Schneider said today. Here's what I think is going on. Let me know what you think in the comment section, whether you agree with this. I think that they are fully open to having conversations with other teams at the Combine about a trade. I think they'll listen to anybody. The problem they've got is, in order to give up 27 million dead cap hit, it's going to have to be a great offer. What's a great offer? In my opinion, they can't expect any more than a day two pick, second or third round. They can't expect any more than that. That might be enough. One of those two, that second or a third, or a third and something else, third and a fourth, something like that. They can't expect any more than that. So they'd have to determine whether or not that's worth $27 million, first and foremost, to not have Geno Smith, for him to go and play somewhere else. Maybe they do think that's worth it. Maybe they want to get some draft stock. Maybe they do think there's a quarterback that prepared to take a 16. Maybe they do, whatever it is. You know, maybe they're going to trade up for a quarterback. Who knows? Maybe they want the stock for that. But I think they're going to be open to listening. And I just don't think they're going to get a great offer. I don't think they're going to get an offer that will tempt them to eat the $27 million dead cap hit. And for that reason, I don't think he's going anywhere. And the reason I think that they're not going to get a good offer is this time last year, Geno Smith was a free agent. We were all wondering whether he was going to re-sign with the Seahawks. And no other teams were being linked with Geno Smith. The only team that was tentatively linked with him was Tampa Bay because of Dave Canales going there. And when they got to the Combine, no one was talking about Geno Smith and Tampa Bay. They were all talking about Tampa Bay and Baker Mayfield, which is what happened in the end. All of the writing on the wall was, there's only really one team in this for Geno Smith, and that was the Seahawks. So everyone kind of went from going, he's going to get the franchise, the, they're going to franchise him. The, the, he's going to get 40 million a year. People were saying that. PFF were projecting 40 million a year over three years. People were going, he's 38, 40 million dollars for Geno Smith. He got no, nowhere near that. He got a team-friendly deal, which was completely flexible for the Seahawks to sort of work it along, as working out as they go along. 
it got nowhere near what people were thinking because there was no market there. So if there was no market a year ago as a free agent when you don't have to give any picks up, why is there going to be a heated market in the trade right now? There isn't. There just isn't. Even if his salary is like 12.7 million or whatever, yeah, it's great value. But you have to give up picks for a guy who's going to be 34 years old this year who was a journeyman up until two years ago and it's worked well for him in Seattle. There's no guarantee that when he goes somewhere else, it's going to work out for him. And teams are going to be sceptical about that for an older player in a good even if you don't think it's a good quarterback class and a deepish quarterback class when there's other options like Russell Wilson, you can get him for like a million dollars when he's released by Denver. You know, he's a similar age. And then if you want to go bigger, you've you got know, Kirk Cousins, Justin Fields. So I just don't see there being an offer that is going to tempt the Seahawks to, to move on. And I think they're comfortable with that. I think when if when that happens, and I don't think they're going to get a good offer, I think they'll look at a $26 million cap hit for Geno Smith and go, eh, it's, it's middle of the road for quarterback in the NFL in 2024. And he's kind of in the middle of the road as a player. That's my opinion. I know some people think he's top 10. I think he's probably like, I don't know, the 14th best quarterback in the NFL. And his salary is like, what, 16th or something. I, I don't know. Don't quote me on that. It's in that kind of ballpark, the $26 million for next year cap hit. And I think they'll just go, that's fine. We, we're, we're happy to live with that. In, in a situation even where we draft a quarterback and like Russell Wilson in 2012, he wins the job over the more expensive, experienced veteran in Matt Flynn. I think they will sit on that $26 million and say, we've got a good backup. I think they will. Or they'll just do what they did with Matt Flynn and move him for like a bag of footballs or something, whatever. I think that's what they, their plan is, is just to be hedged so that they can go into the draft saying, okay, We've got Geno Smith and, in their world, Drew Locke as well. And if the right quarterback is available with the right pick, they'll take him. And then they'll have a competition. And the rookie may well win the job. Who knows? He may not. In that instance, he'd be red-shirted, maybe. And Geno Smith would be the bridge. But the worst-case scenario for the Seahawks would be to go into the draft with just Drew Locke and another quarterback who isn't very good, let's say Sam Darnold, for example, and then miss out on your quarterbacks, and then that's what you're stuck with for next year. Because Drew Locke has not convinced anybody yet that he can be a legit starter. There's nothing to suggest that he won't be, in the same way that Geno Smith, no one was expecting him to be to play to the level he has over the last two seasons. So but so that might happen with, with, with Drew Locke. He might come in and he might actually be better than people think. But at the moment, we don't have the evidence to suggest that. So if you go into next season, having got rid of Gino for a cheap deal, took on a $27 million cap hit, dead cap hit, you then go into next season without a rookie because you missed out in the draft on the guy you wanted, and then you've got Drew Locke and another, and that's it. That could spell danger for the Seahawks. So what you do with going in Gino Smith and Drew Locke into the draft, you let it come to you. The guy's there that you want, you take him. If not, okay, it's Gino Smith and Drew Locke time for another year. You go and draft that tackle at 16, move Abe Lucas inside and you improve your offensive line. Or you go and get Chop Robinson to be that fantastic dynamic edge rusher. Or Jared Verse. Or you trade down, get more stock, draft Troy Furtado, somebody like that. You know, the, the Seahawks then have options. They can let the draft come to them, which, by the way, is what they've done for the last two years. They haven't chased needs. They have let the draft come to them. Cornerback and receiver were not Seattle's biggest needs in the first round a year ago. They took Devin Witherspoon at five and Jackson Smith and Jibber at 20. Why? Because they thought they were the best players available. And I think they want to go into the draft in exactly that same position, not needing to desperately go after needs, drafting best player available. So I think that's why they want to, they would be very comfortable going into the draft with Geno Smith and Drew Luck on the roster. And I think part of the reason that they're being non-committal is because they know Perhaps there's a quarterback or quarterbacks in this draft that they really like. One of them might be Michael Penix Jr., who could then come in and would compete for the job straight away because it's his old offensive coordinator. He'll know the terminology. They'll be able to work an offense very quickly around Michael Penix Jr. And he's an experienced, mature quarterback who, you know, a quarterback start earlier these days. And they might want to just sort of throw him in there at the deep end. So I think that's why they're keeping their options open because they, 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 <laughs> They're looking at the bigger picture. What's the draft strategy? Okay, we need to have this guy on the roster. What's the best for us moving forward? Well, it might be to draft a quarterback. If we can't get that guy, we're going to need an alternative. And Geno Smith is their alternative. But I also think over the next few days, 
If anybody says, picks up the phone and says to John Schneider, meet me in this hotel, meet me in this bar tonight, I want to make you a great deal for Geno Smith, they'll answer the call and they will go and have that conversation. I just don't think anybody's going to be willing to offer that much for Geno Smith. So that's what I think is going to happen. I think he will be on the roster in 2024. I don't think the Seahawks are committed to him in any way, shape or form. I think he's a convenience for them at the moment to have on the roster. And he could be a decent starter for them next year. But I, I think it's absolutely clear that the Seahawks are thinking they need somebody else longer term. And that that could be somebody in this draft. And it could be somebody in the next draft. But I think they're already thinking, we need the next the guy who can help us lift the Lombardi trophy. And with the greatest respect to Geno Smith, I don't think he's a bad player. I don't think he's the problem in Seattle. I don't think he's lifting a Lombardi trophy in Seattle or anywhere else for that matter. And I think they know they've got to go and get the guy who can do that. And that their plan is to do that sooner rather than later. So that's my thought. That's why I think they're being non-committal. I think that's why they're saying what they're saying. That's what I think is going to happen. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Don't forget to check out SeahawksDraftBlog.com. There is a huge combined preview with a Seahawks leaning uh, angle all the way through it. It's a huge piece. It's like 11,000 words. So you probably need a couple of sittings to get through it. But there's so much information that it's taken me an age to put that together. So please check it out and share it around online if you get an opportunity as well. All help with that is much appreciated. I just want to see, it's, it's a free blog. I just want as many people to get their eyes on that as possible. SeahawksDraftBlog.com. We are going to have so much coverage on the combine. Robbie Williams is going to be in Indianapolis watching the workouts. He's going to join us on live streams. You will not want to miss any of those, so make sure you subscribe. There's going to be a live blog every day covering everything. I'm going to watch every second of the combine. There's going to be a live blog every single day. I'll be giving you my thoughts during and after each day of the combine. It's, it's just going to be the most comprehensive coverage you can find on the NFL Scouting Combine from a Seahawks perspective. SeahawksDraftBlog.com. Subscribe to the channel. Like this video. Let me know your thoughts on the Geno Smith situation in the comment section. Until next time, bye for now.